this is another kind of mythology. I mean, one of the things I was thinking a lot about in this book are, you know, the sort of stories you grow up with, uh, what kind of twines itself do so deeply into your, your sense of self that, uh, that you don't even know it's there. And I was thinking about this particularly, a lot of this book is about infertility and uh, my own experience of infertility. And I was thinking, why does, you know, there's not only the medical fact of it, but there's also the societal shame of it, the stigma. And where does that come from? Where do we learn to stigmatize our women who are infertile, who are aging, who are unfaithful? And I was thinking of the stories I was told as a little girl, and one of them was Peter Pan. And you know, Peter Pan, if you read J.M. Barry, um, is a very beautiful and a very sinister book. Um, <laughs> it is one in which there are these little boys, the lost boys, and they really want this little girl, Wendy, to, to come to Netherland and to be their mother uh, forever. And, um, and so it's explained in the book that at one point they're trying to, they're waiting for her arrival and they want to build a house to convince her to stay. And so all that's lying around on the ground apparently are these red oozing vines. And so they build this house for Wendy and it's this red oozing, sticky, veiny looking house. And you're like, ooh, is this a symbol for something? Let me see. Um, so, uh, so the epigraph is from the book, uh, Red Acre. Of course, Slightly was the first to get his word in. Wendy, lady, he said rapidly, for you we built this house. Oh, say you're pleased, cried Nibs. Lovely, darling house, Wendy said, and they were the very words they had hoped she would say. And we are your children, cried the twins. Then all went on their knees and, holding out their arms, cried, Oh, Wendy, lady, be our mother. Ought I, Wendy said, all shining, of course, it's frightfully fascinating, but you see, I am only a little girl. I have no real experience. In a scheme to entice her, they fashioned a shrine with jewel work of berries, with cruel work of vines, red mullions flaunting flocked velvet drapes, rose patterned carpets in plush piled heaps. At the pulsating heart of this upholstered nest, a snug seat like a socket that whispered of rest. But I can't be your mother. I'm not ready yet. And the eaves of the little home slumped with regret. And its sorrow turned inward, turned acid, turned foul. And corrosion traced stencils in slime on the wall. And the draperies puddled in ponds on the floor. And the overripe cushions ruptured like sores. The seat melted to nothing. A hollowed out void drained away everything in a purgative flood, more taboo than urine. And a fluvial flow streamed toward the sewers, a liquefied no. Wide eyed and <coughs> wide mouthed, she gaped in dismay as pearl like the possibles went floating away. Um.